Hi. 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 Welcome to Hello. the first edition of Melanin's Roundtable. Um, this is going to be brought to you with production from Shell's Pearls of Wisdom. So I want to introduce two of my beautiful Melanin Aces from the Atomic Ace Sister Chapter. I have Liz over here on the top corner. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hi. And then I have the beautiful Saviance on the bottom. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so um, I just kind of want to let the girls give a little bit of information about themselves and uh, introduce themselves and say where they're from. Yeah, we have some people from across the pond here and we have some people from good old Michigan. So go ahead, Liz, start for you. Um, what's your name and where you're from? So my name is Liz. I also go under the name of Betty or Betty Baby Doll or Betty Boson II Captain, which is a long story. <laughs> but I'm from London. <laughs> I'm from the United Kingdom and um it's very cold here, it's rainy, it's everything you think of it is. And um it's yeah. So grumpy well, grey Liz over here in the cold country of the United Kingdom. United Kingdom. I love her accent. We're gonna I love it. Yes, we, love it. we just have her keep talking to us and we don't even talk about nothing. We just have her we, just we, talk. We won't talk about anything. Just let her talk. Yeah, just sing the ABCs. Like we don't care. Just sing. We don't care. <laughs> All right. And then I have Savion. How are you, baby? I'm doing good. Marvelous, the, darling. Marvelous. Yes. Tell us a little bit about where you're from. Okay, I am originally from Detroit, Michigan, you know, Motor City, where the place born from Motown was born, you know, where the, the big singers, the greats, honey, the greats, the Franklin, greats. Jackie Wilson, Temptation, Timmy Terrell, all the, the greats, that's where I'm from, um, um, I am, I do pinup modeling, pinup YouTube, I'm a YouTuber, pinup uh, vintage, pinup and vintage enthusiast on YouTube. I also um, sing vintage retro songs. That's one of the, you know, one of my hobbies I love to do. Um, I also uh, have, I, uh, I'm in the Atomic Aces and I am here to bring some of my knowledge on this pinup community and what, you know, we can do to help you guys. So that's why I'm here. And this is why we have them. So we do have other ladies in the Atomic Ace, but for the first round table, um, I just started with a couple because we can be overwhelming if we all are on here at once, because um, we're all really strong, opinionated people. Um, if you guys don't know me, I am Michelle, AKA Coco Chanel. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And I'm from the good old Windy City, Chicago. So representing. So, shot town, baby. Shot -town. Sh town, shot rack. I, I, I survive every day. No. <laughs> um, so I, I, we, we're gonna just to give you guys a little bit of a background of what the round, with the melanin round table will be. We're gonna take topics in the black community or even the melanin community that affect people of color that maybe necessarily other like cultures other races would not know is going on because they're just not part of it so right. um we have two topics we're going to try to do two topics per week so that we can kind of just shed a little bit of light on on our struggles on our environment so that you guys can kind of see where we're coming from when we say the things we say or do the things that we do um, it just gives more awareness so that as a whole the community can get along and we can unite and we can stand strong with each other and not be segregated or divided so that is the reason for this uh, show so um, this week I did pick a hot topic um, only because we at the Atomic Aces, we put on contests every month and we try to make them fun, but we also try to bring some kind of awareness, whether it is awareness to culture, whether it's awareness to racism, sexism, being a bigot toward like people's alternative sexual lifestyle. We try to like shed light on these kind of topics so that everybody has an, an opportunity to feel good about who they are and what they represent. Mm -hmm. So, I'm gonna take full responsibility for this contest idea. I felt bad that the Atomic Aces were kind of like, got the backlash of it as well, cause I'm part of it. But I did wanna do a contest called Thick Thighs Save Lives. 
Now, if anybody's ever heard this saying, it's all over the internet, it's all over TV, it's on t-shirts, pillows, coffee cups, it's, it's like on everything. So when I did come up with the slogan, it wasn't anything malicious behind it, but I did stir some, some feathers up and kind of got a little uh, a little uh, backlash because people felt as though it was geared to put down women that are skinnier or women that have a hard time maybe gaining weight and they have body image issues with that part of their life so what i was basically accused of was being um putting on a contest that was excluding everybody which in theory, yes, that could be looked at like that. But as I have already tried to explain, and I think I did a pretty good job, and I think some people understood, some people might not have. But what I was trying to explain was being someone who has interviewed over 30 women in the community, I have been asked and I've been told by many, many people that they do not feel comfortable entering some contests. They don't feel like they belong in some contests and they actually feel like they would not ever place or win in a contest because of their size. So with that being said, that pulled at my heartstring because being a woman who was once almost 300 pounds at five foot two, I understood that struggle. I understood that need to just want to feel like you're sexy too. You belong. You want to win. You want to grace a stage and not look to your right and your left and just see people that don't represent where you're coming from. So, and that on top of that being African American, it's even a double whammy because I was not only a bigger girl, but then I was also African American. So I really stood out and didn't fit in. So I was just trying to put together a contest that those women could feel like they could celebrate themselves and not feel like they were going to be looked at as the big girl on stage. Right. So <clears throat> that's where that contest concept came from. It was no malice or any ill intent toward women that were skinnier or women that have hard time with their body image because they're on the smaller side. So now that I've kind of given the reason behind the contest, I have two wonderful women in the community, two women that are really, really respected. And I kind of wanted to get their opinion on the topic as well, just to kind of see if we can get a difference of opinion or maybe a different side of the coin. So I'm gonna start with, um, I'm gonna start with Saviance on this one. Um, Savian, so you had a really strong opinion on the whole entire concept. Can you just give me, when you saw me post this, what was your first instinct when you saw the name of the contest? When I first seen you post it, I thought it was a very beautiful concept. I felt like, honestly, it was finally, finally something for, you know, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be frank. <laughs> finally something for thicker pinups to celebrate for you know do you kind of understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. i when i first seen it i i i thought like wow thick guys say lies that's a, a bomb beautiful content uh concept because you know there's you know i'm gonna be frank the average size woman is a size well that's what they say 14 16 and up mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of these pageants, you know, and I'm not just speaking on the pinup community, they're genre, they're, they're garn and genre towards the women that are more in shape, more, you know, they're more smaller, they're petite, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like it was, it, it, it was a, con a, a beautiful concept that was meant for, you know, black, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not black, but for women that are on the thicker side, you know, it was for women with thicker hips, thicker legs, women that are more full figure. You know, I didn't see, uh, I didn't see one bad thing about it. I, I honestly thought it was very bad. A, eh? you know, I thought it was very bad. I thought that was a bomb concept. And, you know, I honestly felt that it was nothing wrong with it. You know, I feel like there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, you know, oversensitivity in this community as is you know if if you was to say oh well let me let uh uh all blonde hair blue eyes save lives then you know it's gonna be an issue with that or if you, for brown eyes you know i'm just giving an example 
And I feel like it really wouldn't have matter what you would put. Somebody would have been offended by it. It literally wouldn't have matter what you put. And I really felt it shouldn't have been changed because, you know, if we change one thing just because a few people are offended, then they're going to keep wanting us to change more stuff and more stuff. So I felt, honestly, I felt there was nothing wrong with that concept. I liked it. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of us women are on the thicker side. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with being skinny or petite, but it does feel good to have a concept and a contest that is kind of gen- not genre towards us, because I know what mm-hmm. you meant, but it's, it's called that because it's friendlier to everyone, you know? Because a lot of these contests, a lot of, you know, thicker, bigger, heavy set girls don't want to enter because of their size. So when you put that there, that made it more friendly for the others, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And so I really didn't see a problem with that. I, seen, I think it was really bomb and it should have stayed that way. That's just me. I, I really like the concept of that name. All right. Well, thank you for that. And Liz, yeah. when you saw it too, how did you first feel? I no joke. I'm going to come and say that I was raging. I was absolutely raging because for me in the UK, I did mention that we've got Miss Curvaceous, which is a actual pageant contest competition in the modeling industry where it is just plus size women I mean I've had my ups and downs with modeling and with you know that particular contest you know I wanted to apply one time and I was told that I wasn't curvy enough but then when I went to model general modeling you know auditions I was too big where does that leave me Mm -hmm. So when I saw Thick Thighs, Save Lives, I was thrilled. I was over the moon. It's only not even two years, maybe I would say one and a half years where we're starting to see a lot more curvy people. I mean, we've got a lot more. I can't remember her name. I think it's um, it's not Amber Rose. Uh, What's her name? Begins with an A. And she recently had a baby. She's a model and a plus size Oh, I know you're talking about. And then we also have, like, now coming out, like, the Lizzo's and, like, women like that that are just, like, not afraid to dress more risque and, you know, show off their curves. I'm like, but this is only happening now, right? This is only recent. This is not something that has been happening as long as you flip and open a magazine and seeing skinny, 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 nothing but skinny, going through an online website, going through a supermarket, a store, anywhere that sells clothes retail, and going through how many sizes, you know, in the UK we've got eights, tens, sixes, and then all of, you know, the bigger sizes are at the back. So yeah. it's only become a thing. That was a thing when I, I remember when I was younger, I'd go to the you know stores and I'd be like, okay, yeah. Uh, I felt ashamed at one point having to go right to the back to get you know my clothes that were so many of them on the rails. Mm-hmm. Growing up, I started seeing a difference now in the UK. So one, we've got like all these curvaceous UK, all these sort of modeling agencies that are now saying, you know, no, everyone of size, different sizes, different ethnic backgrounds, all of this. And I'm like, why is it only come to light now? Also, it's I've because noticed. Because I think it's only starting to even be accepted. That's exactly. Why. Because before, if you I were feel- big, it was considered like not attractive, <laughs> unhealthy exactly. looking, disgusting, exactly. like... I don't know if you guys have ever experienced, like, if you're eating something in a restaurant and someone's looking at you, they automatically assume, like, oh, she just needs to put that burger down and eat a salad. And it's like, and, like, in your mind, you're like, I'm eating probably the same exact thing that's on your plate. No more, no less. So why am I disgusting? Because I want to eat a burger, but you're perfectly fine because you're, you're just skinnier. So to me, it just felt like something that was happening recently. And then now I've noticed that when I go shopping, I wear a size 18 or 16 to 18. My size is hardly ever on the rails. 
So wow. what? Now that everyone, the average size, that half, like the majority of women in the UK are the same size as me, which is 16 plus. And now it's becoming accepted. Why? Because people are a lot bigger now. Yeah. And that's why, that's the reason why it's only yeah. now becoming accepted when the average size was a lot smaller it wasn't so accepted my my next question would be um to piggyback on that because my job is to kind of do devil's advocate so basically it wasn't so much that people were upset just because if they if because they felt like if they were skinny they couldn't be in it but some women did express that they were having body image with being on the skinnier side um some women talked about like how they have health conditions that actually prevent them from gaining weight so this is the one reason why it hurt them not to be to be considered curvaceous or thicker because in their mind they want to be like that and they just can't so is it okay for us to to be sympathetic toward that concept when all three of us have maybe had body image issues in the past? And now I, I wanna, now I'm glad you said that because I wanna speak on that. You know, I feel like, yeah, we can be sy sympathetic to a certain extent. And why I say that is because we understand about the health reasons you know it's it's unfortunate that you can't be the size you want to be and you can't you know because of your body is fighting against it but on the flip side why do we have to stop our fun for that reason i'm not trying to be you know like rude or mean about it but it's just like why do we have to stop celebrating our size because you're upset about the size you can't be okay i'm gonna have you stop right there because that's a great point um liz after hearing what savians just said how do you feel about that to me i mean what about the flip side what about people that can't downsize to skinny exactly to health okay. what how do you think they feel now that we've had to change something that they finally can be a part of they can be a part of anything but something that might mean more to them because it's more tailor-made to them right. okay i know a lot of girls that they can't get to skinny they can never be skinny they can't they just can't do it it's not a fact that some people may have health issues some people may not have the time because they are working their butts off and can't find the time, you know, to go out to the gym, to go for a jog, to do exercise this, exercise that, you know. And for me, I see it as that. The same way you've got your health issues and you can't be, you know, bigger size that you would want to be, that's fine. You don't have the body that you want. But what about other people that don't have the body that they want due to health issues? This is something for them. And this is a something that, you know, it's not regularly seen um, So, like, say, skinny persons. So you both made, like, really excellent points. And so this is my question. Let's say, once again, devil's advocate, let's say you guys saw a contest that was like, this is for the itty-bitty titty committee, something like that, that was geared a contest for smaller women, smaller breasted women, whatever the case may be. Hmm. Would you be insulted? Would you be taken back? Or would you be like, oh, well, I guess I just, I'm not getting into no, that contest. No. I'm why would I? No. no. <laughs> go ahead, Sam. You should go first because you both are. <laughs> go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Liz. What were you going to say? No, no, no. I was going to say okay. I would have supported it because uh, women why, doing their why? thing is women being celebrated. And that's what we support. Women being celebrated. Exactly. We celebrate someone of, you know, they're skinny, they're fat. They jiggle, they this, they that, huge boobs, huge butt. Well, whoever makes a competition, we support it. Why? Because we're human beings and we're women and we support that. If it was a guy that did it, support that. And right. Uh, and, 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 and my thing is this, why, are, why should we be mad about that? We don't have tiny tits. Let's <laughs> yeah. be frank here. We do not have tiny tits. So why am I going to be mad? What the heck do I got to be mad for? No, so, no reason. Okay. So basically what I'm hearing is, because that was one of the questions that, because I'm just trying to pull out um, 
some of the inf some of the the comments that were kind of posted so that was kind of posted another thing that was kind of posted was like if um that the pinup community is supposed to be inclusive and not excluding you know uh anybody out of it it should be like for everyone so this contest would have been for let's say it was it was geared for more curvaceous women but other women that maybe did not really let's say we did not think that they were curvaceous but they wanted to do the contest if they could still have every right to get in we would not segregate them we would not say no that no. would be that would be the premise of it. Like we don't care if you were bigger or smaller. We're just letting you know that the concept of this is to be on the the plus size. Of right, the it's, it's geared towards BBWs. It's geared towards women that have a wide set ass. So let's just be frank about it. It's just it's it's geared towards that. Okay, right. you know I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna tone it down because I'm very passionate about it. You know, but it's it's very frustrating that there's always somebody offended about something. Yeah. Well, welcome to life. Because guess yeah. what? Life is a big old offended thing sometimes. We're all offended about something. Okay. So what would be you know, the happy medium? Like if we could like, because what I did was I changed the concept and I, I, I still kept it for positive body image because that's what the whole entire the whole entire goal was to have a positive body image. So I just changed it to rock your body so that anybody that just wanted to show a positive body image can enter. I was see, And out. see, not to cut you off, this is what I mean by, and see, I'm, I'm glad that you put it as rock your body, but it would have still been just as fine if you would have just left it that way, you know? Because I feel like, and I hate to say this, but this is why we're fighting so hard for the Black pinup community as now, because we, someone was always offended by something that we had, and then they shut that down, and now we don't have anything. So now when we come out with more stuff, someone's offended about it, and they want to shut that down. And if we keep just, like, yeah. you know, we like keep, now we keep letting them, we keep letting people do that, what are we going to have left? What and I have mean? had a couple of girls inbox me privately and say that they were really excited about the contest and now they yeah, want, they're, they're not, not even sure that they're going to do it now because, now because they're going to be intimidated by those women that have the perfect bodies because mm -hmm. now the competition is open to everyone to rock their bodies. And there's going to be a hell of a lot of people that have already been rocking their bodies because they have either the perfect body or they look absolutely amazing. Or, or even on the flip side of that, people that maybe are big and curvy and are hella confident that are still going to be intimidated for somebody who may be skinny, somebody who may be big and curvy as well that doesn't have that amount of confidence. Right. You know, exactly. it's the flip side of both because you're like, okay, I've lost people now because the title of the event mm -hmm. has been changed to you know, open to be, well, open to everyone. Right. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a touchy one, but I just see it It's a very see, touchy you, it's, it's, it's very touchy more with you know, the there's gonna be some people. There's going to probably be some people offended even what we're saying now, even though what we're saying, you know, what we're trying to explain. I know there's going to be some people offended, but you know what, that's just, you're just going to have to be offended because it's I mean, always going to be. It's, it's the way I look at it, because I've, I've talked to so many women now, I mean, from all over the, the spectrum, from, like you said, skinny to the bigger, from black to white, Latino, um, other, like, I've had so many women that have now reached out to me because it did start a little bit of the, the, the pot in the community, because for the first time, I think they saw a contest that was like, holy crap, this is amazing. And then when I did change it, they said that they understood why I did change it because they saw the, the, the backlash I was getting. They could see the comments that were being said. Some people's comments were a little bit rude now, and like disrespectful. Now, question I want to ask? Go ahead. What question I want to ask? How many comments was that was saying this stuff? Because I didn't see that much. To tell you the God honest truth, there was way more people supporting it than there was not. Then why change? You know, that's a great question. I did it because since I am part of an organization as the Atomic Aces, I have to kind of always be respectful of 
who I might bring down the trenches with me. Now, if okay. I would have just done this as just a shells, pearls of wisdom contest and not connected to anybody else, I would have felt free to do whatever I wanted to do. But because so many of the ladies on here are building platforms with their own brands and their own names, I would hate for someone to be so mad at me that they take it out on the group and then they uh. don't support one of the girls in the group because of what they're trying to do. That makes sense. I, I well, see why you did. I see why you really supportive. If they're really upset about that, I mean, if they were that supportive, then they would have supported the title that you gave that group. They would that's have been true. supportive. And that's where I'm kind of, that's where I'm kind of like teeter tottering. I feel like if we're really supposed to just be a supportive community, I would feel like, yeah, I feel like, why do we have to support this? But then you don't want to support that. Or it's okay to support this, but it's not, it's kind of like, you support all rounds. Right. You can't pick and choose. Yeah. You know, and that's something that I really hold close to because I've seen people say stuff, you know, supporting things like, the BLM movement, other things as well. And, you know, they're so supportive, but then they go and do something against what they're supporting or they don't support something else that ties in to what they were originally supporting. And I'm like, you can't pick and choose. Yeah, I thought, I thought really, I'm going to be honest, I thought really when I put it out there, I was going to get a backlash from my, my bigger community. I thought they were going to be like insulted with the title, like, oh my God, don't talk about how big our thighs are. So I really thought I might insult them. And then I was going to have to explain to them how this, this is actually a body positive contest. Don't be ashamed of your body. This is when you're supposed to be celebrating it. So when I actually was getting the back, Backlash from the the girls saying that basically this was like a competition that's dividing the community because you're now putting the skinny girls basically against the big girls. I really was like taken back because I did not think that that would be the problem. I I thought there may be one, but I totally thought it would be from the other spectrum. So yeah, I just I I, I yeah. So that's why I changed the Saviance. I mean, because I know you were one of my biggest person that asked me, like, why did you do that? And, uh, and, you, and you know, <laughs> you already know I was going to not go crazy, but I was not going to let them drag you down like that. I was going to go to war over you, girl. Yeah. You know and me. I did. I, and that's one thing. I did have the backing of the whole entire Atomic Aces. I was um, not going to play that card. <laughs> like, y'all are not going to do my girl like that, all because she said, Thick thighs save lives. Now, me being the petty Betty that I can be, I even put this out there. I said, well, why don't we just put mel melanin thick thighs save lives? How about that? Everybody happy now? Are we all mad? Are we upset? Or did I stir the pot a little more? You know? You know, I'm sorry, but it's just like someone always has... And someone is always upset or offended yeah. about something. So what if we came out with a contest that said, uh, a, a stretch mark saves lives. So we all have stretch marks. You're going to be mad because you don't have no stretch marks. <laughs> You're bad because I mean, I get, and that's kind of like what a lot of people were saying. They're like, if we come up with a contest that says, like, I have, you know, snaggletooth contest, like, are you going to be mad because you can't participate because you don't have snaggletooth? You don't so have it's snaggletooth. Like, and you, but do you see how, yes, how ungrateful some people can be? We have the freedom to even come out with contests like this. Yeah. There is countries that don't even have the freedom to even say what we can say. We're, we're, we're free to express ourselves and we abuse it right. because some people mm -hmm. just can't handle not being included. Well, guess what, sweet cakes? Not everyone's going to be included in stuff. That's life. You know, I, 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 you know, guess that's why we have a melanin atomic aces chapter because it's something yeah. garnered to the melanin pinups. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it's, it's, you know, some of the white pinups, you're not melanated. But you have your own, you have your, you have a space for you. But why can't we have a space for us? Is this a problem? You know, so thick thighs save lives for thicker, bigger women. I think that was a bomb name and it shouldn't be changed. Excuse me, regardless if anyone got offended by it or not. And I see why you changed it. Me though, I wouldn't have because guess what? It's time for our bigger, thicker women to shine. 
They need to have something to feel beautiful for. And if you're going to feel, you know, upset by that, then tough. Put your big girl panties on, sit on the couch and eat a cookie. Because that's just life. We're always good. We're all going to be offended about something. Okay? So, you know, my thing with that is, what are you crying for? There is women that and can't even get and out their couches or out their beds because they, 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 <laughs> they, are, they got 300, 400, 500 pounds of fat ass. Okay? Mm -hmm. So guess what? They can't even get out their beds because they got to get help. Yeah, you know, if you look at the shows, if you see shows, they got to cut them off their beds. Yeah. You, so you, you think I, they, would I, love, they would love to be on that show. They I, would I, love to be in a contest, and they can't. And that's why I, I wanted to bring this to the round table today because I did want to have other women that have the same mindset, but also different mindset for myself because I felt like it was okay to change it just because I was trying to make sure that everybody did feel included. And I think my insecurities of when I grew up not feeling included in everything made me want to make sure that they did so that played on my insecurities from how I grew up so as soon as somebody did tell me that they felt like it was something that they could not participate and they felt left out it did play on my heartstrings because I was like oh my god I know exactly how that feels yeah and that's another reason why I kind of like did because I just I I couldn't handle hearing those girls some girls just had yeah. some silly stuff to say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna repeat it but some girls really did have like the whole entire depression behind it the self um mutilation maybe or self-hate and since i know i have suffered from that that is one of the other reasons what drove me to just kind of okay. change it it was, but, some, it was somewhat of a you felt yourself there yes okay. like i kind of was reading it and feeling like damn, like, I know what I meant was right, but I also never want to hurt someone in the process. And I know and that's you being the sweet, caring, hearted person that you are. I can't help you it. You are I, the only one I know that would do that. <laughs> I, no, mean, I, I would do it. I would have changed it, but I wouldn't have been happy about it. And that was like, like me, I, I wouldn't. Like that. I wouldn't. You would. I wouldn't change I would have changed it, but I would have changed it to something it. sarcastic and something that had, you know, you read between the lines. I would have right. changed it to something really, really. So you want me to change it? Okay, I'm going to change it, and I'm going to make it so indirect to the people that oppose the original title because that's just my. That's just how I am. Like, if you've made yeah, me do I mean, something or something that I don't agree with, I will do it to my best interest, to those girls, those women who are now going to lose out. I'm going to do it to their best interest. You can have your time to shine, and now is not that time. It's for this exactly. time. That, You're going to exactly, lose your best that's, interest. That's why I said oh. I wouldn't have changed it, because there is women that are, you know, 500, 600, 700 pounds they are so insecure about their bodies. They don't even want to come out their homes. And yeah. to see online there's a contest for them gave them so much hope. And then when it got snatched, it probably really hurt them. Yeah. So that's why me yeah. personally, I wouldn't have changed it. And all those, you know, ladies Would that you have added a test. Uh, what I, I did dabble with this and I just kind of want to get your opinion because I feel like this would have been kind of silly too, but then it would have appeased both sides of it. So let's say I kept the um, thick thighs save lives or even if I said thick thighs, pretty eyes or however I wanted to like word it, but then came out like right with that, you know, if you got the gap be happy or something like I don't know like something like to to like appease the smaller women would that have been snarky at that point because now I'm trying to appease both sides because that's how I took it I'm like because I could have made a contest that was geared to skinny women yes. they would just turn around and say why are you separated us why right. are you and that's, what, that's what I'm trying to get at I feel them. like if I would have tried to make them happy by making yeah. it like now you can no. celebrate your body yeah. type and I yeah. can celebrate this body yeah. type. I feel like I would have been coming across as being each other. right. And yeah. that's why I did not want to do that. What you did is fine. I'm not happy you changed the name, but you changed it to something that will still benefit everyone. 
and right. not make people feel. So what you did, I under fully understand, fully support what you did, even though I'm not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm happy, but I, I support you. That's I what support we do. We support. Whether we're I happy or not, we because at the end of the day, yeah, right. yeah, at the end of the day, it's a sisterhood, you know, and I look exactly. at you as my sister. It's in our community. You know, at the end of the day, it's a sisterhood. Other. Regardless yes. if we don't agree on things, I feel we still have to have each other's back because, Liz, there if I don't go. have your back, who will? There you go. If I don't, baby girl, if I don't have your back, who will? If y'all don't have my back, who will? We have to have each other's back. So regardless if no one liked it and I liked it, hey, girl, I like it. But if you want to change this, if you feel in your heart you have to change this for your mental peace, for your inner peace, for you to feel everyone's okay, go ahead. Do it. I'm happy for you. Do it. I support that. You know, me personally, though, I wouldn't change it because I honestly didn't see nothing wrong with them. And the ones that are feeling some type of way, baby girl, that's too bad because it's not your time to shine at this moment. It's for the bigger pinups to shine. And they need something to shine. If not, they're not going to feel included. And this is this whole th get up we're trying to do, right? Let everyone feel included. So that's just too bad if you just can't have the spotlight on you for one sec. You're going to live. You're going to have it again. <laughs> you know, I have to be blessed. You know, the competition has personalities. And then some of you ladies, it's, and the, the ones that are watching this, I'm the blunt one. I'm very blunt. Y'all know. <laughs> I'm blunt because sometimes it has to be, the, sometimes, I, some, sometimes I have to be blunt because that's, all some people understand is bluntness. Yeah. So I have to be blunt sometimes, not disrespectful, just blunt, so you can understand how passionate and serious this is and meaningful this is and how much we truly enjoy this, how much we're truly you trying to what? make a this difference. This is what I'm hoping that comes from this because I'm always popping off with different ideas of contests. You guys are, you know, chiming in now with the Melon Aces. We got some Girl, stuff up our sleeves. Girl, you have a contest for every day of the week. I know. Contest, I'm telling you. contest, <laughs> side contest. Girl, you may even have an arm contest. I'm just saying, we have, like, the flappy arm about? contest. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Magazine, and I'm like, it's gonna be a whole two page spread just on events. That are so the re and that's one of the reasons why I've done a lot because I, I felt the need. Because when I went, I mean, this is gonna be like a totally different round table for another day. Um, Savian's Liz, we've talked about this off camera, and we're gonna touch on it on the round table. But when you enter the pinup community as an African American woman, because our community is so much smaller, it's hard to feel like you fit in, period. It's hard to feel like, um, you, you walk into a, 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 a place and when you look around, you're only one of three black people there. And then the other black person is a janitor, the other black person is a person running the whatever, and the other black person is like maybe, you know, um, doing something else. But your stage is nothing but your, your, your white peers. It makes you feel a little bit insecure because you're just like, I just don't feel like I have someone that just looks like me. And I don't think people really understand how that feels until you don't have that. So it's an uncomfortable feeling. It's very um, scary. It's kind of scary because then you feel like if something does go wrong, I don't even have like another person to turn to and say like, hey, you got my back or whatever. So it's, it's just that kind of feeling. So I've been trying to come up with contests that have been outside the box so that people that have the, had those feelings do have a place to do them to feel like it's more about them or the tribe that they're used to. Marja. Perfect reason why I did the rainbow contest because I don't think there's ever been a contest geared to support mm -hmm. people with alternative mm -hmm. sexual lifestyles. I've never seen it. I looked for them. I never saw one. And I was like, well, how cool is that if we can celebrate Absolutely. our, you know, our fellow sisters and our fellow, even fellow, fellow, fellas that, you know, live an alternative lifestyle and let them know that if we're really going to be a supportive community, we're going to support you cold heartedly. There was nothing, you know, 
wrong about that contest. Some people might not like it because of the concept, because maybe they're just, you know, bigots against, you know, that culture, but it doesn't mean mm. that the contest itself was wrong. So right. that's why I'm doing things of that nature, because I'm trying to let people realize that we can be supportive of each other and not actually live that lifestyle or not actually participate in that but we can still support each other regardless so that's what i thought this was right. going to be too i thought even if you were a skinny girl i thought you would still be like go ahead with your bad self with your you know your nice thighs or whatever and they were just going to support i didn't expect people to get angry at it to tell you the truth and you know that's that but that's going to be all the time though there's going to be someone upset if you was to put uh wide gaps saves saves lives or whatever it's people with people with that doesn't have gaps in their legs or even in their teeth is going to get offended i don't have a gap so why can't i join yeah so bottom line i think we're both so i think offended. we're i think we're all in agreement that you're never going to please everybody so nah. sometimes you got to just see if the cost if the reward is worth the cost and at this time, because of the, the sensitivity of the subject, I did not think me keeping the title was worth the cost of having the, co the contest not be celebrated and be a good influence on the community. So that's ultimately right. why I did change it. And, and that's, un that's understandable, yeah. even though I hate it. I know, I know. <laughs> you guys told me the very next day, the very next yeah. day. Um, so the second topic that we wanted to get into, which is actually a very, very important topic as well, is the fact that we have a community of people going to get education now to do hair and everybody that is in the pinnacle community loves to get their hair done. We love the styles. We love, you know, being pretty, being sexy. And it's already hard to find a good beautician anyway. But let's say now our new generation that are getting educated on how to do our hair is not even taught how to do an African-American's hair, period. It's not even in the syllabus. It's not even a topic that they discuss. How do you guys feel about that? I'll start with Liz. Well, I literally, when we spoke off camera about it, I was so shocked because everywhere you turn in the UK, there will be options for weaves, relaxers, you know, you name it, referring to, you know, women of an ethnic background that have a certain type of hair, that it's not the traditional European or even British, you know, British and European aren't the same thing apparently. Um, so it's not the same as, you know, the typical European type hair. Right. And um, for me, I, that, I, I just knew that straight away. I knew, I knew, I mean, my parents, they used to go on about the fact, especially my mom, she used to have to go to a particular hairdresser back in her day to get her hair done, relaxed and whatnot. But then that just brings the whole fact about relaxing to make your hair straight, yep. like a European. Okay. But now I'm seeing more and more of it. I mean, and um, I lived abroad for, my goodness, how many years? And some countries I lived in, I would have to pack my suitcase with relaxer kits because they did not cater for my hair out there. And some countries would shock me because, I mean, I went to Turkey and I'm looking at the menu and they've got relaxing, braiding, you know, Isn't weave, that amazing? I was like, huh? It's amazing like, what? like all over the world, what culture embraces what culture more. Oh, yeah. And oh, here yeah. in the, the States, it's they not that we don't like our weaves and our relaxers and our braids. It's not me. that we don't do that. No. So when I got reached out to from a fellow mm. pinup who wanted us to pass this petition around that needs to incorporate in every um, learning environment for cosmetology to make sure that they include an ethnic educational part of it really sat weird with me in 2020 that this is Absolutely. even a petition that we need to sign oh yeah so Savians, how do you feel about that i 
honestly feel that would be a really good thing. I, but my first thought is, why are we even signing this at all to begin with? Shouldn't this? Shouldn't we have been had this a long time ago? I mean, but but it makes sense because you know you guys know. I feel I, like if you were a black woman, you weren't even thought of to even need your hair done. Exactly, and, and see, <laughs> the thing is this. Even back in the 50s and the 40s, they barely had anything for black women for their hair. I can't even tell you guys how much research I have done just to look for black retro hairstyles for, pen, for oh, black yes. women. Yeah. I, oh, I can't yeah. find a thing. Guys, when the I- The only time I find something is another black woman has taken the time to just do a YouTube channel. But if you try to actually yeah. find authentic stuff, it's really, really hard to very. find. Yeah. It's very hard. And I searched Pinterest. I searched Tumblr. I looked online. I even talked to a few salonists that, that had salons mm -hmm. back in the 40s and 50s. They told me they had to make it up. It's that hard. I it's have braids bad. underneath this wrap. And I know when I first got on the scene, my biggest fear was I'm not going to be able to do anything with my braids. And I refuse to cut my braids off just to fit in to the box of what they're looking for too. So a lot of my styles I had, I looked at the Caucasian or the European style of it and tried to mimic it the best way I knew how on my hair texture and what I had. And I did pretty well. I'm not even going to lie, but the fact that I couldn't just be able to Google like how to do, you know, a suicide roll or how to Google how to do bumper banes. And the fact that I couldn't just Google it and find it readily, like how um, my fellow pinup sister who has to, who happens to be white can was disheartening. It almost made me have a panic attack about my first competition because I didn't know how I was going to represent that era without being able to dip my hair, which is like one of the biggest parts of a competition is hair so yeah. it gave me like anxiety that i couldn't even figure it out like because i couldn't find it and isn't that sad you should be able to find it like that and you can't and and even when i went to puerto rico they didn't have no they barely had any relaxers and there's a lot of black people in puerto rico it's a it's, it's a lot of Lat afro latinas there that have hair kinky coily hair but no relaxers yeah there's no there's yeah. no there's no curlers there's yeah. no certain shampoos for our hair conditioners yeah yeah, yeah so just, so what did our so this is the thing what did our grandparents do when i talked to my great-grandmother and my grandmothers they told some one of them told me they had to usually you they had to literally use towels to roll their hair and pin it just to get a curl yeah so Isn't this is sad. It's very sad. So this is the big thing that when people are watching this that I want you to kind of get from any of our round tables is to understand that when you and this is not to like just single out my my white people. I trust me, I love you to death, but I just you guys ask me sometimes what the struggle is. This is like something that you guys will probably never even comprehend because I promise you, you could probably go into any Sally's, any beauty supply store and find almost everything that you need unless it's truly a specialty item. And for us, we might be, I remember going to a place and I really needed, oh my gosh, I so needed just a regular um, black diamond rubber black comb. Okay, everybody knows the black diamond brand. It's those thick black combs that really get through your hair. And I remember I broke mine because it like kind of snapped. And I went to like three or four different stores just to find this type of comb because it was the comb that I could use in my hair and would work. And like that is something that you guys might not ever comprehend. Just not being able to find the right brush, the right comb, the right, you know, it's just, it's kind of sad that we are in society, we pay our taxes, we were hardworking Americans, and we can maybe go into a store and not just find a simple product. Or a shampoo. Or, or a shampoo. Right. Heck, half the time, they don't even have our, our foundation complexion. Yeah. And oh, that's 20, another big one. It's yes, 2020, makeup. they don't even have our com a, 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 a complexion. And you it's not that they're not out there. And, and, and just, just to, like just to let Sabah, 
Right. It's it just to tell, like, to piggyback on what Savi has to say, it's not that they're not made. It's not that they're not manufactured. It's just the stores don't carry it. So exactly. I have to go it's online. So weird it. It's so weird hearing it because in, like, I remember, yeah, we've got, like, Rihanna who launched Fenty. Mm -hmm. and we've got pat mcgrath here we have brands here and it's like it's it's incredible because some of these brands you would look at like ysl my makeup is ysl when people ask me especially women of color they will ask me what makeup do you use and i say ysl they look at me as if i'm being funny because they associate that brand with white people. They expect me to say like Mac, Pat McGrath, you know, mm. or Bobby Brown. I'm like, no, I've never worn any of them. Never. And well, the same thing is You would have a hard time if you came across this pond to find what you're looking for. This is what I mean. I'm like, you I'm would have such we're a hard thinking, time. We are sat here in the UK thinking America is the leading place for black beauty and black hair. No. And not at all. It's in the Not UK, either. and you are watching this video. Take back everything you said about you know the amount of black hair shops you see. Nope. You can be going down a road where I live in South East London. Every say, do you know how far I have to travel to go get my hair for braiding? I have to make a 35 40 minute drive just to get wow. to a place that sells hair for me to do my hair. And then Detroit. So there's like a whole road in Peckham, in southeast London, right? Peckham yeah. Rye, Halston, Kilburn, these areas are like a whole road, right? Start to finish nope. is all hair shops, I hairdressers. Wish. I all wish. All for Afro hair. I wish. All, they're known for it. You can walk down the pavement and you will trip on weave. You will trip Girl, on I wish. I wish life. we had some tumbleweave around here. We don't have yeah, that. Tumbleweed. We've got tumbleweave. Uh, no. And it's trying, it's it. just so bizarre hearing because we're here thinking, oh, we haven't got it as good as America. That's, I mean, it's an eye opener. And I really hope people that are from the UK, especially women of color, are hearing this because we are sat here. We are under the impression that it is America that has all the wigs, the weave. No, nope. nope. I mean, we have it. Don't get me wrong. We have it. But it's like sometimes you got to search high and low. No, we have it. It's just you got to search high and low. Like Detroit, Detroit is one of the hair capitals. So when you, if you was to leave my house, you can go around the corner from side to side, from the very top to bottom, it's nothing but hair places nail places, makeup. And guess what? It's all garnered towards black women. That's I awesome. I can appreciate that. Because yeah. I do find my shade and I find my texture. I find everything I need. I don't even have to go to um, all the stores. Are you going to ask your question, Savians? Are they black owned? No. Hmm. Asian owned. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just needed people to realize that because some people think you know, we go to these great hair stores and we're getting like our, since it's, it's geared to African-Americans and they have our stuff that, no, this is actually the biggest importer of our hair and our weave and all that good stuff is Asian. Asian. I'm shocked. I am really shocked right now because of everything that I, I really hope, I just, I'm just sitting here hoping that a lot of people from the UK see this. Because we are sat here basing ourselves mm -mm. on it is hard to find a black owned product made for black people. It's really and if like they are black owned. I'm gonna be blunt. They're very unpro uh, unprofessional, and I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't gonna say because anything, but yeah, I have literally went to a salon and I told her, I said, "You lost the customer because I was coming to you. It was very unprofessional. I don't appreciate me being a." She accused, somebody accused me of something very disrespectful while I was getting my nails done. And one of the ladies that was doing someone else was like, oh, honey, I'm, I'm just playing with you. I said, you don't play with people like that. And that's very unprofessional, cla uh, unclassy, and trashy as heck. And you don't play with people like that. You don't know what type of da day I had. You don't know what I'm going through. I came here to get my nails done. Yeah. And then my hair done. Now she lost the customer. And I and that was back in 2011. 
but I have never went back since. And if you guys would look on YouTube and see how many hair and nail fights is in these salons owned by black people, you will be very astonished. And we wonder why some of us don't have the business. We're not gonna have the backup of the business. It mm -hmm. all boils down to professionalism. Yeah. Where is the professionalism? My thing is, let's touch on professionalism. Savias brings up a great point. Liz brings up a great point. I am disappointed in the black community when we do have black owned products. Other black folks don't want to pay full price for this. They always want to hook up. They always want something for nothing. They always want a discount. Exactly. And that saddens me because like our black owned businesses are sometimes struggling just on its own because they're not getting the support that they want. So if you're going to buy black owned, give them their top dollar. Give them what is deserved. Don't ask for a hookup. Don't ask for a discount. That is very disheartening that you think because I'm black, you black, I'm supposed to give you my product for half off. Like that's yeah. not how it works. The only reason why I'm able to keep my doors open is because I'm, I need to make money. So if yeah. I keep have they've got that attitude here in the UK. So <laughs> it's funny because you will be in a hair shop here and you will hear somebody trying to like bring the price down or something and they get cussed the hell out you know by a black person and I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh but I find it absolutely hilarious first I'll tell you how it is so you go down these roads and there'll be someone outside like a hair shop you walk past them and be like sister sister can I do your hair so they're on the download trying to get customers to do their hair okay fine you get past those you don't get into your hair shop now, run by Asians. It's got like the whole, all the staff in there are Asian. No problem. Fine with that. You know, and um, you ask them for something, they get it. They're good. They, you know, their customer service level is there. It is amazing. They got it in a heartbeat. They can't get it, they'll order it in for you. Fine. Okay. Then you have the black assistant that is there to give you recommendations of a wig or maybe a um a drawstring ponytail because that's my thing i love my drawstring ponytails and you'll talk to them and say oh i want that first of all they'll either kiss their face roll their eyes mm. or they will stare at you in a way like why are you even asking me like why are you bothering me right now why are you bothering me and I'm like, if I was to ask, like, where I go, it's an Indian. They're, um, they're from India. I've spoken to them countless times. My mum used to buy my hair stuff from this one store when I was about two, three, when I was a child. And I still go there, and it's run by the same family, just the descendants. <laughs> and they know who I am. I go in there. They know what I want. I started wearing drawstring ponytails. They helped me through that transition. They still offering me those little hair bubbles that got like sweets or they got like little novelty ones. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm 20 years too old for that. But I still like the fact that you remember, you know, me mm -hmm. and I used to wear that. And if I was to go into a hair shop that was just fully black staffed, the atmosphere in there I could cut. I can cut the tension with a knife the moment I step in there. I understand I carry myself differently to the typical South London black girl. Okay, fine. But when I walk into your shop, you don't have to give me that kind of attitude, that kind of tension that I just want to walk the hell back out. Yeah. Or you start looking at my hair. Or they say, is this real? You don't ask a person if their hair's real. You ask them, how did you do that style? That's a really nice style. Yeah. Oh, I like your hair. Not is, is your hair real? Yeah. You don't say that, you don't say yeah. that to anyone. It's and not that's having cooth. That's like just no cooth. That's the reception so, I get. So <laughs> the bottom line, like just to wrap up, because I we approached our hour super quick, ladies. Um, yeah. like yeah. super quick. But um, just to kind of wrap up just what we're talking about with this segment with like not feeling like we have a lot of uh black products for us. I definitely want to touch in on another round table, especially with Savians, because she talked about this a lot, where when she's looking for vintage clothing or she's looking for clothing, period, she will buy from a particular seller, she'll buy from a particular vendor, give them all these kudos and everything. But when she looks at their advertisement, there's not a black face to be shown. There's not somebody that's curvy to represent. So what her biggest thing was, I'm giving you all this money, my hard-owned money, but you're not even giving me the respect to at least have mm -hmm. some 
somebody on here that looks like me or represents me or they just don't have anything period to gear toward the african-american and then that's also a problem so i definitely want the next round table for us to just talk go a little bit more into the the black owned businesses and how we as a community can maybe help support more of our black owned businesses and if you're not a particular black owned business how you can support us and make sure that we feel represented because i feel like if i work hard for my little money i do want to pay and spend it but i also want to feel good afterwards i don't want to feel like i was just had i don't want to feel like wow they can take money from me but they can't give me the respect to even acknowledge i exist that's exactly. a problem that's and I had, I, had the, I had a really big problem with that because, like I said, it was a certain brand I bought. And her purse is expensive. You know, it was 300 for a purse, 200 for a purse on her site. I got, oh them, I got them. And the fact that when she posted Pin Up Doll Ashley, and all Pin Up Doll Ashley did was just post one pic of the purse. You post her. She's a Latina. But when I put you in my videos multiple times. I've contacted you multiple times, messaged you, emailed you. I have done everything I could to contact you and I, you clearly seen it. Don't give me the, I even at you on Instagram. Now, if you don't see that, come on now, come on. I'm at you on Instagram. I put you in my stories, all that. And you didn't see, you didn't acknowledge me. I will not spend another penny of my money on your purses ever again i will buy and i and, and i found thank goodness i found someone that makes the purses just like that and she actually acknowledged me yeah that's a big thing like i said that's definitely something i want to touch on um hopefully i can have maybe some of the other um, aces in on that one so i can get their opinion because unfortunately this has happened to all of us so i would definitely like just to have that perspective um looked upon because once again this is just trying to educate the community so that you guys can see on the other side of the coin some things that we may go through that you don't really necessarily know about because it's just in our culture you won't happen to see it so um thank you ladies for the first melon around table it went very yeah, well awesome. i love the open honest conversation and as you see we are super open and honest and if you guys ever have any questions on topics like throw out something for us and you want to know what we feel about it or have a discussion totally open to that because of the simple fact we truly do represent what we want in the community and that is unity and for people to understand and be able to all come together so if that means education and acknowledgement and just validation that's what we'll offer so thank you guys i will see you guys at the round table next time Bye. Bye. <laughs>